This video is about using the simple desk in QLC Plus. So I have my simple desk uh, display up here. Uh, currently what it's showing me is all of my DMX channels across the top. If I click on this icon, it shows me just DMX channels that I have assigned to fixtures. So that makes it a little bit easier to program that way. Now, this is a quick way, if you've um, assigned fixtures in your fixture area on the fixtures tab, and you just want to get in and get some lights on right away, this is a quick way to do that uh, without having to design anything in Virtual Console and without having to go into the Functions menu. Uh, if you don't want to do it, this is kind of a, a third way of going about and um, creating lighting and saving it to scenes. Also, this can work like a traditional uh, lighting console, like a hog lighting console or a Magic Q. Uh, there are a couple quirks with it, though, which may be like little bugs that are with the program, but it is possible to use it. So let me show you what I mean. So I have uh, four front of house lights here. I'm going to raise these guys up. Anytime you move anything, in, put the sliders on, it turns red. Keep in mind, this is a master override. So if you've done anything in this section of QLC and say I do this here in my simple desk and then I go back to my virtual console and I go into run mode, these lights will be on. You need to cancel them first. You need to cancel anything that's showing up in red on your simple desk before you go to any other modes, otherwise it's going to interfere. These are like kind of like master faders. So the way you can cancel them is quickly click on the X box up here and it gets rid of it, cancels anything, any values that you've input there. But keep that in mind. There's been a couple times when I accidentally had some things on and I'm programming somewhere else and why are these lights on? And then when I look back into simple desk, it's like, oh, I have faders selected back here that I did something with. So anyway, I do have my four faders here. Now I can go right ahead and dump these values to DMX and save them as a scene. Or I can go ahead and record them here and it'd be Q1. Then I can change these around a little bit. So this worked almost like a Magic Q console or a very, very simple version of like a hog console. Record this. And let's say then I do these about here and I turn my reds on and I record this. So I have three cues recorded. Now I can X these out when I go back to here. Now this will run two ways. Um, a lot of you have consoles with playback faders. We don't call them like faders in the traditional sense, playback faders. So all of this has been recorded on the playback fader number one. If I look two, three, and it does give me the opportunity for 22 paid playback faders on here. But notice nothing stored here. If I go to playback fader one, I have those three cues stored there. I can start them one of two ways. I can slide up my fader and that activates them. And then you can see this is active now. And if I go to Q2, you see Q2 come in and then Q3 come in. And then it'll just loop back beginning one, two, and three. Now I can fade it out by pulling this down. But another way of running this is I can simply click on the arrows. It'll automatically bring fader one here up to full, my playback fader up to full, and then start running the cues one, two, and three. And it would just simply loop. I can hit stop to stop that. Now you notice that there are no fade in and fade out times. And doesn't give you an opportunity to click to put them in. You actually have to edit. So I'm going to go back to my Q1 here. I'm going to go to edit. It comes up. I want to say I want a two second fade out, two second fade in, and hold time is going to be infinite. Then I'm going to go fade to, uh, Q2 here. Um, two in, two out. Hold time is going to be infinite. And I'm going to go to 3Q3. Um, Two in, zero out, hold time is going to be infinite. So those have been put in. Close this up. I've added my fade out times, my duration times. Now notice something kind of a little wacky here. So I had, this is my channel view where it's just showing me lights that are patched. 
but then this is showing me full DMX view. For some reason, when you're in edit mode, it doesn't show up over here. It only shows up in the full DMX value, which is a little bit of a pain. So you'll notice that when I go to here, I can go across and I can edit this way. And we'll show you what I mean in a second. And you can see some of your light values. Now I can click the X, take those out, and you'll see that they've been edited. I'm going to go back to just my actual patched fixtures view and take a look at this. Starting with one, I'll just start it this way. Now you can see that they have a fade in value. And then I fade from one to two. And I fade from two to three. And remember that we don't have any fade out value. So boom, it'll just go there quickly. Okay, and I can always put in a blackout cue where there's nothing in there and just stop. So that's how that would work. The copy over here is actually a clone and that will pop up. So I say clone this, it'll ask me, do I want to clone this to a different playback? So if I wanted to move this, these cues over to playback 22, I can do that. I can simply move, say, move these over to playback 22 and now they're copied there. So I have them in two areas now. I have them in one and in 22. Now, they don't make it easy to get rid of them on one. You have to go to edit mode. I'm on one. Select this. Select this X, X, X. Now I've gotten rid of them. So now in playback one, and notice that same thing happened over here where it's showing the two. So I just click up here and it shows my all my master DMX channels. I'm out of there. Click the X, they're gone. But notice on playback one now, I have nothing, but everything's over here on playback 22. And I could actually run them from there. There's my first cue, second cue, and my third cue. And then I would just hit stop from there. So it does kind of run in that way that you can actually run cues from here. It's a little bit clumsy to do them, but it's a fast way if you had to do some, put something together uh, very quickly to do that. Now, there's one other kind of a little glitch that happens with this. So say if I'm in here doing my cues, and I'm working on this cue stack here, and I want to edit this Q1, I can click Edit. Again, it shows me my values here. So I'm going to go to, I, I don't know why, but there's this little glitch. You can't edit them in that mode. So i got to go to my full DMX values. Just going to move this box kind of out of the way a little bit. And actually the box is in the way. But say I wanted to alter my values here, I can do that a little bit. But notice what happens here. Even though it says I still have timing up here, two seconds fade out, two seconds fade, and duration infinite, it takes it out down here. So I think that might be kind of a glitch. So you have to re-put it in, because otherwise if I just click Done or Save here, it's like, wait, what happened to my fade in, fade out, and my duration values? So Keep in mind, if you do edit anything in here, you need to go back in and redo this. And I'll just show you that again. Infinite. I'm done. Close that out. So say again, I wanted to edit, uh, let's say, Q2 here. And I click Edit. Actually, after I'm done moving my sliders around, you'll notice that I've lost my fade in, fade out times, even though it says I still have them up here. So I just got to kind of re-put them in again and click unclick infinite. I definitely think that's kind of a glitch that they have here. Now I close it. I, I keep my values in there. Click my Xbox and they're done. I can go back to my channel and I look at my channel and now my new values will be in there. You can see that the values have changed on the different channels. So it is uh, just to recap then it, it is a quick way of getting some lights on if you don't want to go through the hassle. I would just go into your channel mode here, adjust them, save them as scenes. You don't necessarily have to put them in queues. If you like working this way, you could put them in queues. You could use separate queue stacks. Uh, when one queue stack's running, so for example, if we start this queue stack one, and then I go to queue, or queue stack 22, if I go over here, that still stays active. So say I wanted to put some lights on here. And record this as a cue. All right, that would be there. And that's recorded into there. I can X those out. Now, if I'm in this and I run one, it's in here, but also this cue stack here is also running too at the same time. So you can layer cue stacks doing this just as you would with uh, another lighting program if you were using 
playback faders. You can you can layer in different cue stacks if you desire to do that. 